So if you'd start by introducing yourself and just telling us a little bit about your name and how you got your name. <laughs> okay. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Desmond Neff. I have a nickname of Ted, and when I was going to school in Edmonds, I was always known as Ted Neff. So uh, that's a, a more familiar name for uh, people familiar with things years ago. And. Uh, I, uh, uh, in our family, uh, they uh, didn't know how to shorten Des, Desmond, and so they, to get a nickname, they couldn't call me Guy, because my father's name was Guy, so they decided to call me Ted as a nickname, and that's how it got stuck, or how Ted happened. <laughs> so, uh, all the way through grade school and high school, I was known as Ted Knapp. That was it. No one ever called you Desmond? Not in high school. Oh, wow. Yeah. So where did you grow up as a young child? Uh, my folks moved to Alderwood Manor when I was 11 years old. Mm -hmm. And so I lived uh, up in uh, Alderwood by Martha Lake uh, all the way through high school. And then uh, after, after I graduated from high school, uh, Bev and I got married and we went off uh, to college. Well. <laughs> mm -hmm. What was it like growing up in Alderwood Manor as compared to now? Now? Mm -hmm. um, it was um, a very wide open area, very uh, large uh, areas of undeveloped uh, land. And uh, so we actually lived uh, out in the country, really a long ways away. And uh, at that time, uh, there was one high school in Edmonds, a school district, and it was in downtown where the uh, center is. And uh, so it didn't make any difference where you lived. If you lived clear out at Martha Lake, you went to Edmonds. Mm -hmm. If you lived over in Montlake Terrace or Briar, you went to Edmonds. If you lived in Woodway area, you went to Edmonds and just the one high school. So. When it came to like out of school activities, did you hang out with mostly just people in your neighborhood or did all of the areas, the students hang out together? Yeah, we, uh, we became, you know, uh, a group of people once you get to uh, high school um, then you develop those friends. And so the friends that we had uh, were from all over the school district, yeah. Um, so, what was it like on your home? What did was it like a farm type of home, or was it? Yeah, the place we had my folks own two and a half acres, and uh, we, uh, my dad had always wanted to uh, raise some uh, animals. So uh, we had uh, uh, a cow, and we raised uh, pigs, and he'd get a calf, and we'd raise it for beef, and. Uh, this uh, two and a half acres had lots of fruit trees on it, and so uh, we uh, were supplementing our uh, uh, life by uh, raising these particular uh, animals and things. This happened uh, during the Second World War, and there was rationing going on. So uh, you had to have food stamps to get meat and butter and sugar, and uh, well, we didn't have any problem. We never even used our food stamps because we had plenty of meat uh, that we raised ourselves. So, yeah, and chickens. <laughs> Did what you? Was, oh, um, you can go. What was that like during the war while that was going on at home? Yeah, you know, it was. Uh, uh, didn't really. Uh, notice any uh, big change uh, being somebody who, uh, let's see, how old was I when the war broke out? Uh, whatever it was, it was oh, 41, you know. I uh, just uh, didn't, uh, didn't change things too much. There were 
some things you couldn't do, you know, but uh, yeah, it was uh, really didn't, uh, didn't have any direct effect. Uh, and as a kid, you know, what the heck, you know, you're, you're not thinking about those kinds of things at mm -hmm. all, you know. So. Did it impact any of your schoolmates? Um, <clears throat> no, uh, not that I remember. Uh, we, uh, by the time we graduated from high school, we were all impacted because at that time, uh, you, when you were 18, you had to sign up for the draft. And uh, so uh, most people then that I was in high school with were 18 by the time we graduated, so we all had to sign up for the draft. And the, uh, at that time, the Second World War was over, but the Korean War had started, so um, most of, uh, just about all of the people, all the males that I went to high school with ended up um, being uh, drafted or going into the service. Yeah. Was that scary? Mm, no, I, I don't know. I, I never ever went into the service, but uh, the uh, you just knew that uh, when it came time, uh, you had to sign up for the for the draft, and there were things that would defer you. Uh, to begin with, if you um, were going to college, uh, they wouldn't uh, draft you out of college. So. Uh, a lot of people, uh, to avoid getting drafted, uh, went to college. Well, uh, they only had that rule for a short time, and then they said, no, just because you're going to college doesn't make you have a deferment. But uh, if you're going to college and you're married, uh, we won't draft you. Well, then, it didn't take people very long before they decided, well, I don't want to get drafted, I'm going to get married. Mm -hmm. And so um, they uh, uh, then changed the rule after a while to say, uh, well, if you're going to school and you're married and you haven't been in the service, you can still be drafted. But if you have a child, we're not going to draft you. Well, by the time they got to that rule, we had been married uh, uh, and had our first child. So uh, I never, never, I just missed <laughs> the furnace and never, never made it to the service, so. That's lucky. <laughs> yeah. What was it like when you first met your wife? Well, we went to high school together, and uh, but we never dated the four years that we were in high school. We uh, went to, uh, we met at a dance uh, after uh, our um, senior year. In fact, she likes to tell the story that uh, we had, uh, at that time, down at the, uh, uh, what's the hall? The Masonic uh, Temple. The Masonic Temple. They had a teenage dance every Friday night. And so uh, I was down going to this dance, and it was Lady's Choice, and she asked me to dance. <laughs> so then after the dance, did you start dating? Yeah. Okay. Cute. What was it like when she got pregnant, when you guys were married? Well, when we uh, got married, we decided uh, we would postpone uh, having kids. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, plans uh, didn't work out quite that way. <laughs> uh, by the time we got out of college, we had three kids. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wait, that's eight years of college. Yeah, eight okay. years of college. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, and then we had two uh, after that. So. Oh, wow. And all uh, five of our children are graduates of Edmonds High School. Oh. And all of us are diehard uh, Tiger, Tiger, Edmonds mm -hmm. Tiger fans. <laughs> were deeply disappointed that when they talk about Edmonds High School, they say nothing about tigers, or they say nothing about the purple and gold. Can't figure out what's going on. Do you want to talk about the tigers? Sure. So what was it like to be a tiger? 
Well, that was the only thing there was. Mm. You know, for years in this school district, there was only one school. And it didn't make any difference if you lived in Montlake Terrace or if you lived in at Martha Lake. You were an Edmonds Tiger. Yeah. And in purple and gold, you know, I was just part of what it was like to uh, live in the Edmonds School District. Yeah. So earlier you had mentioned something about football. Yes. What was that like? Well, of course, football is uh, always a, uh, a fun uh, type uh, part of high school. And uh, so we had, uh, that was really a lot of fun. We had, we were fortunate enough when I was a senior uh, that the team uh, uh, had a, a really good record at that time. We were in uh, a league called the Northwest League, and that involved schools from Edmonds all the way to uh, Mount Vernon. And uh, so, uh, the in our senior year, we were undefeated. Wow. And uh, in fact, we were unscored on uh, until the last two games. Wow! Oh my uh, gosh! What position were you? I played uh, fullback and end. <laughs> Did you have a lot of people come out to watch the games? Yes. It was a thing to do? Yeah. Okay. In fact, it was kind of interesting. At that time, they would even, uh, the day uh, of a game, they would send school buses out through uh, different parts of the school district, and you could get on the school bus, and they would bring uh, the kids uh, down to the play field. We played on the field down here by the uh, Civic Center, oh, yeah. and uh, the uh, and so if you were going, I remember when I was going to school in uh, Alderwood at the grade school, I could get on the bus up by Martha Lake, they would bring you all the way down to Edmonds, you could watch the football game and then get back on the bus and they would go back out through the district and drop the students off. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Do you feel that the sense of community is was stronger then than it is now? Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to elaborate on that? <laughs> like, what was it like? Like in comparison, what yeah. are the differences? Well, um, you know the uh, social activities of the high school. Uh, uh, you know, spread throughout the entire district. So uh, it didn't make any difference whether you lived in Montlake Terrace or lived in Meadowdale or whatever. You uh, you were part of Edmonds. Yeah. So if you're walking down the hallway of Edmonds High, could you describe it? Like how many students attended while you were there? Yeah. When we graduated, uh, we graduated in 1950, and the, our class size was 144, was it? 100 and, okay. Yeah. Well. And uh, so uh, it was um, a four-year high school, and so uh, you know you knew uh, just a, most people. And like so many situations, uh, you always, uh, as a freshman, I knew. Uh, a lot of the sophomores and juniors and seniors because they were the ones that were the shakers and movers in the high school. Mm -hmm. And by the time you become a senior, you, you don't, you know very few freshmen or mm -hmm. sophomores. Is it the same way now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, don't know. <laughs> yeah. How many teachers were there? Oh, well, you know, I don't remember. We've got a yearbook, uh, and uh, the, uh, but, uh, yeah, we had, uh, well, there was, uh, you know, enough teachers to teach all the subjects that they had, you so, yeah. Where did you go to college? Uh, I spent um, one year... Uh, at a prep school in Washington, D.C., 
because I was uh, hoping to get into the Naval Academy and become a, a Naval officer. And so I went back there to uh, uh, take training so for passing the test to get into the Academy. And uh, then I spent uh, the next, uh, I was unsuccessful in getting into the Academy. So then the next four years I went to Washington State. And then after four years at Washington State, I was accepted to dental school and I spent four years at uh, the University of Washington. So you are a dentist? Yes. <laughs> okay. How did you get interested in dentistry? Um, when I was going to school in uh, Pullman, uh, I went there on a, a football scholarship. Um, and um, so I was planning on uh, making coaching and teaching a career. And um, after, uh, was it the first two years? Mm -hmm. Or the first year? After two years. Yeah, the, uh, I, uh, we came home at Christmas time and my sister and her husband had just, uh, he had just graduated from Western Washington College. And he was teaching school in Chimicum across the sound. And we went over there to visit them. And they were mentioning uh, that uh, with the beginning salary that he had as a teacher back then, you know, that was back in the mid-50s, uh, they were two car payments behind on a used car that they bought. They, had, they needed $50, $100, two car payments. And we said, well, we loaned them money, so we loaned them uh, money uh, to make their two car payments. And at that time, Bev was working full time, I think, at college or... No, that was the year I was home. Okay. But uh, I, uh, I didn't have any expenses because I had a scholarship and I had a part-time job. And so uh, I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to school to become a teacher. And financially, I'm better off as a student than they are. I'm loaning them money, and I'm going to uh, go into the teaching profession. And I thought, hmm, maybe I ought to look into an area <laughs> where I have a better chance of uh, uh, generating an income. And I had taken a class uh, in uh, the... Uh, physical education that uh, involved, um, that you had to learn the origin and insertion of every muscle in the body. And uh, so uh, I found that really interesting and I did very well on that, I made that course. Uh, and so I thought, well maybe I ought to look into something that involves the human body. And then uh, that's how I happened to get into dentistry. I chose dentistry over medicine because I didn't, <clears throat> I thought it would really be nice uh, uh, to, it would be interesting to be a physician, but I thought, you know, if I get done work, it'd be nice to go home and not have to go back and deliver babies or sit broken legs or go to an emergency. Uh, you'd be on call all the time. And if you're a dentist, uh, that's rare. You uh, once. You do your day's work, you're, you're done. You don't have to, it's rare that you have call back for that. So I chose that uh, over, uh, well, also they had a veterinary school in Pullman. And I talked to people who were going to vet school and they said, veterinarians are even worse than physicians. They have more calls and they have to go out because if you're, a veterinarian and a farmer calls and he says, my cow's down in the pasture. You can't say, put the cow in a trailer and bring it to the office. You've got to go wherever the animal is. So you have more calls and more difficult calls. And that didn't appeal to me. So. <laughs> you like the lifestyle. <laughs> gotcha. So tell us about your children, your kids. What was that like raising them? Yeah, <clears throat> we had, uh, like I said, five. We had uh, two girls, uh, 
and then a boy and then two girls. So uh, I came from a family of five, and we had four boys and one girl. So we <laughs> we kind of did the switcheroo, <laughs> but uh, it was uh, it was really nice and to be able to raise a family uh, in a place like Edmonds. Yeah. And uh, most of them, uh, of course, we valued uh, education. And uh, let's see, our oldest daughter went on uh, to college. And our next daughter said that she wasn't interested in going to college. She was going to go to work, which shocked us. Um, but she eventually uh, went on and to college and got a degree. And uh, our son then went on to college uh, and got a degree. And uh, then our daughter uh, did the same thing. And then our youngest daughter uh, al well, almost got a degree. She's probably, uh, what a, she went, uh, got the equivalent of a junior in oh. college and then didn't complete her training. Was it sad watching your kids grow up, like dropping off at college? No, it wasn't. It was uh, it was really uh, enjoyable, um, and um, I'm amazed at uh, how uh, looking back on some of the things that uh, happened with us, uh, and uh, hmm, I never um, never thought. You know, five kids uh, is a lot of kids, and uh, but uh, man, we seem to uh, uh, adjust to it okay. You know, you go on vacation and you go to a restaurant, and uh, it's kind of unusual. You go into a restaurant, you got five kids. I mean, that's people wonder. <laughs> well, how bad this is going to be. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, they, uh, it worked out real well. And uh, the, uh, one of the things that really helped was that uh, Bev was able to work even when we had uh, three kids uh, quite a bit of the time. Yeah. Was it hard having kids while you were going to school? Well, you know, at the time we just did it. Uh, didn't think too much about it. We uh, <clears throat> we were very fortunate in the sense that um, when I was going to school here in uh, at the University of Washington, Bev's mother's home used to be right here on this lot, and she uh, had uh, lived by herself. She was a widow, and so uh, the, we lived in the downstairs. It was a daylight basement home, and so. Uh, uh, Bev had a uh, job down uh, town at the where the high school was at that time. It was uh, the ed education. I mean, the uh, administrative center wasn't that for the school district. Part of it was. Yeah. Part of it was. And so uh, I'd get up in the morning and go to school. She'd get up in the morning and she would take our youngest and put in a stroller, and then two of the kids. And she'd walk downtown to the high school, and uh, it just so happened the babysitter lived right across the street from where she worked. Then she'd work and then get the kids and come back home. So, and <laughs> you know, you think about that and you think, man, that was a tough time. But I don't, it didn't seem that bad, did it? Mm -mm. You know, worked out fine. <laughs> when you're young. <laughs> you said that Edmonds was the best place that you could raise your kids. Could you elaborate why? Well, uh, <clears throat> you know, they're, uh, uh, from the point of view of uh, uh, education, we felt strong about uh, the um, uh, education of the Edmonds School District. It was uh, top quality, and uh, we liked uh, living in the Pacific Northwest, 
And uh, so, you know, from that point of view, it was nice. And then uh, after living here this long, we uh, had developed a lot of friends and connection. And so it's always nice to be uh, in a situation where you know a lot of people and, uh, and they know you. So, you know, that part of it worked out good. Uh, part of my career as a, a dentist, uh, I ran for the school board, uh, when was that, 1970 something? Yes. Yeah, and I was on the Edmond School Board for uh, uh, two terms, two four-year terms, yeah. So it's nice to be involved in the, in the community that way, so. Do your kids all still live around this area? Um, four of the five do, yeah. In Edmonds. Yeah, okay. in Edmonds, yeah. Wow, very close. <laughs> yeah. What about the fifth? The fifth one lives uh, in Southern California in a town uh, called Pacific Palisades, which is right next to Santa Monica in Southern California. Did you have any family kind of traditions or rituals that you carried from your childhood to your family? Um, <clears throat> yes, I suppose uh, we, uh, a couple of them would be the Neff picnic, huh? Every year we have a Neff picnic and we happen to do it up at our uh, uh, lake cabin. We have a, we share a cabin with uh, some high school friends of ours up at Lake Rossiger. And uh, then we also have uh, a, uh, a Christmas uh, get together. And so we do that on, we get the whole, as many of the people that can get together, we do that, so yeah, that's all fun. <laughs> Did you ever have like, Sunday dinners with your family when you were younger? Or? <clears throat> you know, uh, yes. In fact, it was kind of interesting. Growing up, that was a, a tradition. It was always Sunday, a big dinner Sunday. And uh, we, uh, it was something special, you know. But uh, that has slowly just uh, disappeared. <laughs> and, uh, in fact, it's... Um, I don't know um, what it, when it started, but um, we used to, uh, as a family, we would sit and eat a dinner around the dinner table, you know. But uh, once the kids uh, get older and they're gone, then uh, it's uh, Bev and I. And uh, it's kind of interesting, uh, the, um, uh, we, uh, we very seldom eat uh, dinner together because um, she, uh, well, I don't know what started all that, but, um, you know, the, um, when it comes for dinner time, uh, sometimes uh, she'll fix, in the past, she fixed dinner almost all the time. And now it's kind of do it yourself. <laughs> and uh, so, I, uh, whatever we're going to have, I fill up in uh, my plate and I go downstairs and watch television. And she fills up her plate and goes into the office and uh, plays video games. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> that works out fine. <laughs> Was it, do you miss having meals that your family made from the, I guess in a sense, organic food from the farm, like yeah. that homemade eggs and... Yeah. No, not necessarily. You know, I don't know how healthy uh, we ate uh, when we were on the farm or, you know, lived on acreage because, uh, holy cow, um, the amount of... Uh, meat and uh, milk and cream and stuff that you ate, you know, isn't the healthiest of diets, you know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Did you have any, back to your childhood, did you have any, like, did you have any siblings? Yes, <clears throat> there were uh, five in our family, four boys and uh, one girl. <laughs> and when we moved up here from California, my oldest brother was, I think, 17 or 18. He had graduated from high school down there, so he didn't come up. But uh, so uh, my, uh, my two other uh, brothers and I then uh, spent a lot of time uh, uh, playing together. And uh, being uh, three boys who just came from a, a city, you know, in Southern California, man, it was a real fun place to be. Gosh, we'd run around in the woods and climb trees, and we live close to the lake, and we go down to the lake and swim, and so uh, it was uh, it was a fun time, yeah. Are there any significant memories that you have of vacations or just the stuff that your you and your brothers would do? Yeah. Um, well, I remember one time uh, my mother uh, was had felt that uh, we uh, I ought to be doing something rather than just in the summertime, you know, running around playing. And um, so she said, uh, you know, you, uh, you either have to, uh, there was a lady who lived up the street from us who gave piano lessons. And so she said, you either have to join the scouts or go to Mrs. McClellan and take piano lessons. Well, that was a, uh, that was a no-brainer. <laughs> I wasn't about to go take piano lessons from Mrs. McClellan. Well, I'll go to Scouts. So <laughs> I joined the Scouts and enjoyed that. I had a good time you know, being in the Scouting thing. I but heard that you were in it for a long time, the Scouts. Oh, was I? It, yeah. <laughs> well, I think <laughs> that's what Mr. Bennett said. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, well, yeah, just only for uh, a time until I got to high school. Mm -hmm. And by that time, I had kind of, uh, I had never really got um, into uh, the uh, uh, a more sophisticated uh, scouting program, you know, mm -hmm. if you, uh, and I, I didn't do that, I was uh, busy doing other things, you know, so. So did you become an Eagle Scout or no? No, no. I worked on uh, getting a few merit badges, but uh, that was about the extent of it. <laughs> By that time, I became interested in sports, and they took up an awful lot of my uh, spare time. And girls, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Between those two things, I, <coughs> I, I guess I didn't have time for scouts. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Are there any significant birthdays that you had, either as a child or becoming an adult, like, is um, big? Geez, I don't know. Like your 18th, what was that like turning yeah, 18? Yeah, you know, it wasn't, uh, n nothing, you know, really significant about that that I can remember. And, uh, hmm, I don't know if any of the other were or not. No, I don't think so. Of course, I, I suppose when you get to be 50, you should have, should be some, but I don't think we did anything special. Mm -hmm. I, used, <laughs> uh, I teased Bev because um, uh, I married uh, an older woman. Uh, she's uh, eight days older than I am. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's more our anniversaries. What's that? Our anniversaries. Yeah. Yeah, we we had a uh, our kids um, had a special surprise anniversary on our fortieth. Mm -hmm. At that time, we lived across the street in, in the house over there, and then uh, just uh, well, it was a year ago, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. A year ago, we celebrated our sixtieth wedding anniversary. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh. Congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? 
thought she was the one. <laughs> oh, you know, uh, I don't think there was a lot of wisdom involved. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, it's, uh, yeah, the, uh, I think what it boiled down to is that uh, after we, uh, we met in March, uh, after we had graduated from high school, and at that time I had decided uh, to go to school in Pullman, and uh, she uh, uh, didn't, uh, she proceeded, to, we were talking about it, and she said, well, I'm not going to let you get over there uh, without me, and so we better do something about that. And I felt the same way, too. Mm -hmm. I wasn't interested in going over there and, uh, uh, and having a, a long-distance romance with somebody who's here in Edmonds. So uh, she has a different story to say about that. I don't know. <laughs> So that's, uh, we just decided to go ahead and get married, and then we'd go to school. <laughs> and she had no interest in going to college. Uh, she was uh, the, uh, they were, she was one of the valedictorians in our graduating class. Wow. wow. But had no desire to go to college, so. <laughs> <laughs> so did you just not go to Pullman after you guys got married, or did you? Guys, both go. Yeah, we we left. In fact, we got married in in August, and uh, what was it? Four days later, we went to Pullman and uh, spent four years there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, looking back on your life, do you have any important lessons that you could tell our generation? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, I would think that the uh, best thing to say is smell the roses along the way. And uh, I think that's an, uh, an important, important thing, yeah. And uh, we kind of followed that uh, a lot. Um, I remember one time we were on vacation and we were over in Montana visiting some friends. and. Uh, this was in central Montana, and we were planning on leaving there and going to uh, Yellowstone and see some of the sites. And I looked on the map and I realized, wow, you know, Mount Rushmore isn't very far from here. Um, and Mount Rushmore is on the far uh, west side of South Dakota. And so I said, well, why don't we go to Mount Rushmore? And um, so it was, wasn't a planned thing. We just went. And um, so I was thinking, um, I thought, well, if we don't get there now, we'll get there some other time, you know. Well, that's the only time that we've ever been to Mount Rushmore. Yeah. So I just, we just went ahead and took a little more time and went to over to, to, to see... Uh, to see that, you know. So I think that's that's an Im important uh, thing to keep in mind. Um, just go ahead and and take the time to to do some of those things. Yeah. And fortunately, we were able to to do uh, some of those kinds of things, you know. And uh, so that that was. That was nice. And we've had some really good vacations. We've, um, as a family, uh, have uh, floated uh, rafted rivers with uh, uh, not um, by hi hiring, you know, going to a, a guide. And the first one we went on was the Green River, wasn't it? Green Yelta. Yeah, river in Utah. And then uh, we floated. Uh, the uh, Grand Canyon, uh, I've done it twice, and we've taken, I think, all the family at different times. Uh, and that was uh, a fantastic uh, 
fantastic trip. And uh, so that's been, um, those were really fun vacations. Yeah. Cool. Um, thank you for your time, <laughs> basically. Okay. Thanks.